Welcome to the Intimate Marriage Podcast, where I teach educated, successful couples how to have incredible, passionate relationships so that you can stop compromising and start feeling fully alive in your relationship. I'm your host, Alexandra Stockwell, aka The Intimacy Doctor. I'm a physician and an intimate marriage expert. My husband and I have been married for 26 years. We have four children and full professional lives, and we've created an amazing relationship. I've also shown hundreds of couples how to do so as well. If you want to deepen your understanding of your own relationship and learn to access new heights of emotional, sensual, and erotic intimacy, you're in the right place. I will show you how. Now let's dive in. One of the most exciting things in the world is to see children in the early years when they start to move on their own, speak on their own. When they first roll over, it's incredible. They're usually shocked to suddenly be flipped around. And when they crawl and pull themselves up to standing and start taking those first steps, or when they start talking or reading, there are so many incredible moments in early childhood that we are just mesmerized by, right? In fact, I remember my oldest child, Josephine, when she would nap and start standing up, waiting to be picked up at the end of her nap. She'd be in her crib with her arms reaching out. And every day I'd go in and say, Hi, Josephine, are you ready to get up now? And I remember the day she said, yes. And it was so astonishing. I actually realized I hadn't really been asking a question before because when she answered, I was so astonished. But it also was this profound moment of witnessing her growth. Well, what I am here to tell you today As a mother of four children, my oldest is now 25 years old, my youngest is 10, I have yet to arrive at a phase of their growth and development which I find boring or unimportant or uninteresting. I might not be squealing and just expressing my incredible excitement and profound awe for the changes they make when they're 12 and 17 and 25 for that matter. I was much more expressive in witnessing their growth and evolution when they were little. But it is not one iota less compelling to see them navigate things in new ways and think about things, deciding which job to take and how to present themselves in the first job out of college, or choosing a graduate school, questions about sex, about nutrition, exercise, or really no questions. I just get to witness how they walk down the street because how they walk down the street now at let's say 25 is totally different than how they walk down the street at 13. And sure, there are the milestone moments. My oldest child is getting her master's. There will be a graduation to celebrate in June. My third child Gabriel, who's 16, he recently got his driver's license. That's obviously another one of those significant moments of growth. But what I'm really conveying is that the conversation at the dinner table or when a younger sibling is annoying, how they navigate that, every step of the way, the four human beings that I am honored to parent I find them totally incredible. I feel honored and in awe of their growth and development. 
And honestly, after 25 years, I expect to feel that way as long as I'm alive and aware of what's living inside them, how they move, how they navigate their feelings, their thoughts, their aspirations, their failures, their achievements. It's really incredible to me. Now, why am I talking about my children this way? I'm talking about them this way because if I knew you well, if I had an opportunity to experience you five years ago and today, your growth and evolution would be really fascinating and inspire awe in me as well. The way you move, the way you think, the way you express yourself, where your attention is. Because somewhere along the way, our society has really like sold us a false, just a false idea that the early years are when growth and development is incredible and worthy of celebration. And like, what is it? At 35, we peak and then it's kind of downhill from there. And once we get to adulthood, there's a kind of a sameness to us other than biological aging and getting a new car. I'm, I'm obviously oversimplifying it, but there is this idea that seeing young humans grow and evolve is such a rich experience. And then it's kind of more status quo. And that idea is a place where society has failed us because it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy for many people, but it is not the inherent authentic expression of humanity, which is actually available to all of us. This episode is sponsored by the Aligned and Hot Marriage Program, my signature program designed for busy, educated couples who want to experience more closeness, more connection, and more passion. Go to theintimatemarriage.com for all the juicy details. The name of this podcast episode is Seek Growth, and it is the sixth and final key to an intimate marriage. I've talked in prior episodes about cultivate curiosity, embrace honesty, be kind, choose happiness, and take responsibility. And today I'm going to be bringing it all together as I talk about seek growth. So yes, I started talking about my children and let me assure you, I deeply value my children, but in this regard, they are not special and they are no different than any other children. Every human being has the capacity to grow and evolve with nuance and clarity, exploring life and harvesting it in lessons learned and new ways of being. And what I've described with my children is essential in a relationship where there's passion, uncompromising intimacy, connection, growth, and evolution. I mean, we could get really simple with this idea when it comes to sex, if you're doing the same thing every time, it gets boring. No matter how good it was initially, the same thing over and over gets boring and becomes unfulfilling. We need to grow and evolve in how we touch and are touched, in how we receive pleasure and how much pleasure we can experience. But this is also true in the rest of our lives, when it comes to communication, when it comes to just choosing to cultivate curiosity, that is an expression of seeking growth. It is looking to 
grow yourself and grow the relationship you have. So in talking more about seek growth, yeah, it is a kind of a basic idea, but it gets pretty sophisticated in the application if you choose to embrace it and use it as a key to intensifying, amplifying, and enjoying an intimate marriage. So one way that you can implement this idea is ask yourself on a regular basis, what do you know about yourself now that you didn't know 10 years ago? Or what experiences do you have access to in yourself that you didn't have access to 10 years ago? What about 10 months ago? 10 days ago, how have you grown in the last 10 days? What about in the last 10 minutes? If there's something that you've heard that I've shared, then I hope you've grown in the last 10 minutes. I've been talking for... Yeah, about 10 minutes. This is really worthwhile for you to do yourself in order to acknowledge and celebrate your ongoing growth and evolution because that will reinforce more of the same. And also notice where you've been stagnating and consider if perhaps you'd like to seek growth in that area. So that's a really profound exploration for you. You might put it in your calendar and once a month consider these questions. But it's also pretty amazing and juicy to consider these questions with your partner and ask your partner, who are you now as opposed to who you were 10 years ago? What do you know about yourself now that you didn't know 10 years ago? And again, 10 months ago, 10 days ago, and there's nothing magic about the number 10 here. The point is, how are you growing and evolving? That's really what this question is about. How are you growing and evolving? Where are you stagnating? And where would you like to put your attention to bring more growth, evolution, self-awareness, pleasure, intimacy, and connection. Another way to approach this question of growth, which is maybe a little bit more practical and grounded than who are you now as opposed to 10 years ago, a way to do this would be to ask yourself, what do you want? What do you desire? Because if nothing else, as a person who's alive, your desires are evolving. Maybe you've noticed that when there's something you want, as soon as you have it, hopefully you take a moment to enjoy it and really appreciate it. But it doesn't take long to want something more. We definitely can see this with children, but it's also true when you set yourself financial goals, when you set yourself relationship goals, fitness goals, like whatever it is, when you desire it and you go for it, a little while later, you want more. And there's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't mean you're greedy in a negative sense. It means that you are a growing, evolving human being. And it's something to really align with and celebrate. So what I really want to convey to you as you're listening is that it's important to be clear and intentional about how you integrate growth. Don't let it come find you. Actually, choose it. When you choose it, it's going to be a much easier path and fun and gratifying and 
delicious. This very matter of seeking growth and considering how it is that you want to organize your relationship around growth and evolution is fundamental to my coaching. It's fundamental because it is essential to creating an intimate marriage, to uncompromising intimacy, to really using your experiences and using them as a stepping stone to grow and expand, using them to grow through just having more pleasure in them, to becoming more self-aware, to noticing what triggers you and getting to the root cause rather than just managing the symptoms. These are ways to seek growth and be truly gratified by it. This also comes up actually where sometimes I'll be speaking with a couple and they'll say, I just wish it was the way it used to be. Whether it's sexuality, communication, collaboration, things just being easier with one another. It's like, I just wish we could go back to the way it was in the years after we married. Well, look, that's not how life is designed. You can't just go back, not just because we don't have easy access to a time machine, but because it doesn't work. It is necessary to grow and evolve and discover how you can have an even better relationship with who you are now and your life circumstances, with children, with work stress, whatever it is, how are you going to build a really fantastic relationship in these circumstances without turning the clock back? Well, that is what I'm pointing to when it comes to seek growth. I coached a couple. They were actually in their mid-20s. I coached her a lot more. I didn't coach him that much because of that was what they needed. And when we first met, she was so nervous about everything. She's a perfectionist and she was concerned about getting it right. Like she wanted to make sure she wore the right outfit when they were dating. And could she say this? And should she go to the movie that he wanted to go to so that he would like her? Like, I'm not going to give more examples. I'm assuming you know what I'm talking about. Well, that was how it was when we started coaching. And I guided her to honor her own experience and to discover her own desires, not the desire to make him happy so she would feel better. I mean her authentic desires about what experiences she wanted to be having, what she needed to communicate. It was such a beautiful process. And she sent me a message partway through this experience. And I just want to read it to you because it really encapsulates what I'm pointing to when I talk about seek growth. So what she said is, I am beyond grateful to have Dr. Alexandra as my relationship coach. Even though I still have fears I no longer shy away from experiencing the depth of life because no matter what happens, I know we will talk about it and I will grow. I want to read again this sentence. Even though I still have fears, I no longer shy away from experiencing the depth of life because no matter what happens, I will grow. That is an expression of seek growth, the key to an intimate marriage. It's true. No matter what happens, you can seek growth and make it something that works for you. Make it something that contributes to the beauty, purpose, and pleasure in your life. If you're having an argument with your spouse or you're in a really challenging situation, maybe between one another or 
you're actually in it together, trying to navigate something. Maybe you have a child who's sick and the two of you are collaborating with one another, very loving with one another, but just really concerned together about your child's well-being, or you have a financial decision to make. In other words, you can be in a situation which is really hard with your partner, meaning between the two of you, or together you're experiencing it in relation to something. In that situation, I highly recommend that you ask yourselves, what can I learn from this situation? Where do I want to focus my attention so that I can grow and evolve from this experience? Or we can grow and evolve from this experience? I think there's a way in which if you're an entrepreneur or otherwise in business, it's common to like look back on the quarter and use that to determine new goals and focus priorities going forward. When it comes to a relationship, that is not typical. And in fact, it doesn't need to feel so structured like a corporate assessment of how things have been that then sets the agenda going forward. If that's the kind of thing that's going to work for the two of you, you can definitely do it that way. A relationship board meeting, as it were or a quarterly meeting. But you also can have it feel softer and more of the kind of language that I've been using where on a regular basis, once a week, once a month, once a quarter, although honestly I don't think once a quarter is frequently enough, you check in with one another. Where is your attention Is there any place you think it would be good for us to focus next? In fact, in podcast episodes really a while back, one of the ones that I did with my husband, we shared how every month we have something in our relationship that we're focusing on. We've had months where we're very intentional about having sex a certain number of times a week and really nurturing that connection. There are times when we've each been separately focused on our fitness. There are times when we've been really focused on creating a certain experience for our whole family. There are times when we've read a book together and talked about it. It depends what else is happening in our lives and how things feel between us, whether we have something that is, I'm going to say like more intense, requires more intention together, or if it's something that's a little bit more casual. But every month there's an area of growth that we have communicated about and identified and then get to benefit from. I should add, sometimes it's been finances, which is also a fun area for growth for a couple. So with this, sharing about seek growth, I am concluding my description of the six keys to an intimate marriage and warmly, warmly invite you to listen to these episodes more than once and really implement what I've shared about each key so that you can get the benefits and rewards in your relationship. And obviously, I want to make sure to tell you that if what I've been talking about is something that you're attracted to, you want to be experiencing more of it, then the thing to do is go to theintimatemarriage.com and sign up for the Aligned and Hot Marriage Program, which is the very best way for you to have the tools to implement the understanding, the fun activities, so you can create growth, evolution, pleasure, uncompromising intimacy in your relationship. So if that's what you want more of, make sure to go to theintimatemarriage.com and sign up. I'm very happy to tell you that next week I'm going to be doing another episode with my husband. The two of us haven't 
done an episode on the Intimate Marriage Podcast in about nine months, and I'm really excited to talk with him about his experience and his perspective of how we use cultivate curiosity, embrace honesty, be kind, choose happiness, take responsibility, and seek growth in our 26-year delicious romance. So if you have any particular questions that you'd like me to ask him or the two of us respond to, be sure to send me a message. You can find the link to do that in the show notes, and I'll be really happy to address that when I speak with him next week. Thank you for joining me on this episode of the Intimate Marriage Podcast. If you're ready to deepen your relationship and create a truly intimate, delicious, and vibrant marriage, head over to alexandrastockwell.com and choose the program that's right for you.